Ladies and gentlemen, hearty welcome to the University of Ola. Uh, I am sure that with it, within these surroundings you will have a wonderful workshop conference today and of course uh, also be inspired with respect to the outcome of uh, a conference on a very timely and important topic. I think it's fair to say that uh, in the recent years we have only seen or we are only beginning to see perhaps the, the uh, importance of technologies in society at large. The, ice, the, the tip of the iceberg with, res, uh, with regard, for example, to advanced technologies also in the media sector like uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning. Well, it is really changing and challenging the landscape, isn't it? Our society becomes more complex. And uh, that, of course, also requires, or at least opens up, for us to demand a, a let's say, deeper understanding and controlling of, and processing of data of relevance to, the, to our society, whether it's personal or, or public. Handling these growing masses of data, well, that is really demanding. It opens possibilities, but it's also challenging and poses challenges uh, to us as individuals and society. And now in our digital age, we um, increasingly depend on data and data management to our advancements, for example, in artificial intelligence, machine learning. Artificial intelligence has many practical purposes, and it's great fun for society, but also immensely important with respect to uh, scientists and researchers. It opens possibility for, for doing research otherwise cannot be done. With the computing power and the creative use of artificial intelligence, we can open many closed doors, also to sciences. However, as uh, with many other modern advances, technologies, there are risks also associated and challenges ahead. While these are, uh, well, to, to a large extent, let's say, uh, unknown to us as, uh, as of today, I think it's important that we also underline and understand the responsibility uh, associated with new, new technologies artificial intelligence in our society and how we utilize the new technologies and how we deal with it. This will, of course, be a red thread to today's conference, as I understand. After all, with a rising society and complexity, the work of media becomes more challenging also and more important. I recently saw a TED talk which also raised questions about risks. Um, when it comes to our faith in algorithms and big data. And I deliberately used the word faith. The talk was given by uh, the mathematician Cathy O'Neill and she has a fascinating talk and take on algorithms. She calls them weapons of math destruction. I hope that is an exaggeration, but still it's worthwhile reflecting over. The reason is mainly because algorithms too often are not transparent and understandable. The complexity of algorithms can be used to mask what uh, they actually do, especially for the use um, when it comes to non-computer experts and our insight into to what the potential of these algorithms, but also the threats that they represent. Indeed, this can be highly problematic as uh, the algorithms we live with become even more important and influence us more than ever before. But what happens when um, even the experts struggle with understanding in the advancements uh, in our, uh, artificial intelligence and, and the algorithms? Well, uh, in September 2017, a controversial study was released. I'm sure you know about this. The topic drew, drew attention, much attention, and um, as uh, the researchers had uh, e experimented with artificial intelligence that could guess people's sexual orientation based on pictures. AI used um, enormous amount of data gathered from online dating profiles to learn um, and to train itself with respect to uh, sexual orientation and then support decision making or actually guessing 
what sexual orientation the individual had. On average, it could guess or predict correct sexual orientation just below 90%, which is quite high. Humans tend to be correct about 60% of the time, doing exactly the same based on visual recognition. Naturally, the topic led to heated uh, political but also ethical debates about the values of these kind of research, uh, indeed, but also the impact, obviously, of e uh, AI and what algorithms are actually capable of doing. However, uh, in regard to artificial intelligence, there was another very important um, a very interesting aspect and an important aspect to discuss. Because, you see, the researchers could not tell exactly how the uh, neural network was operating and how it could be so correct, as the conclusion obviously pointed at. What did AI actually see that humans cannot see? The researchers could not tell us, and he or she did not figure out for himself either. Therefore, we don't know what the machine learning process actually led to at the end of the day, how the network was, was training itself, so to speak. This represents a problem, and it poses a problem and a challenge for us, because in society we depend on the ability to be able to explain to each other, but also to un understand the underlying and the fundamental mechanisms. We demand that all decisions are rational behind, or the, 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 the decisions that we make, they, there should be a rationality behind them, and it should be possible for us to, de to explain and describe them and clarify things. That was obviously not the case in uh, this study. What then happens um, if we rely on knowledge from AI in our decision making? If we cannot understand, if we cannot describe what is the, the underlying process? If we um, risk not understanding our own work and the complexity of AI, we could challenge, or we, where we could challenge our direction towards an open research media and uh, even our open democracy at the end of the day. As academics, we follow some basic and highly important principles. With the principles of uh, verifiable science being the chief amongst them, we must be able to verify and recreate a um, scientific theory in order to prove that it carries merit. To do this, our research and science must be transparent. One um, must be able to see and understand how an experiment has been carried out and what logic lies behind a conclusion. We operate in this way to reach qualified research-based knowledge. The same principles are closely connected to the basis of democracy. Policy decisions should be explained and open to the public in order to understand. So what happens when our society has become so complex that we cannot comprehend part of it? Does it diminish our ability to participate in a wide dem democratic debate? Enter the uh, media and today's topic of uh, the Vis Media Conference. Conveying knowledge through new outlets and visuals is clearly or, or certainly challenged. Our of course, there uh, are issues, of course there are issues of fake news and alternative facts, but our technological advances only add layers to these already existing challenges. This is shown uh, by today's speakers and, and the list of topics that's going to be addressed. Researchers, journalists from five different countries, I'm told, contribute with new perspectives on transparency, transparency to, to these various topics. In fact, um, I think that um, in discussing these topics, as well as uh, mentioned my examples mentioned earlier, I think this will really illustrate the need for, let's say, responsible research and innovation seen from an academic institution's point of view. What does our research actually lead to? How are 
our inventions, how are they changing and challenging society? Well, the European Union states that um, it implies that uh, societal actors work together during the whole research and innovation process in order to better align with both the processes and its outcomes with the values, needs and expectations of society. That's the basis of uh, or the ba basics for responsible research and innovation. With this um, in mind, the conference is a very important contribution, I think, as it's built on uh, the principles, so to speak, of RRA. It is uh, free, open to all, and I know that the earlier conferences has uh, connected students, people in the media sector, and science, scientists, researchers, and of course, this is uh, tremendously important for a university to be able to contribute to. It is also a meeting place for cross-disciplinarity, which is, of course, also very important, dealing with complex topics as these are. If we uh, intend to really meet the challenges of our time, they cannot be met by knowledge from one individual discipline alone. We need to see each other, share and work together across our own academic boundaries. I know that many, especially students, have benefited from early conferences, and I hope uh, you will find this one to be even more beneficial to you, the students, but also to the rest of you. So with this, I wish you an enlightening conference, and thank you for your attention.